everyone this is abdul samir sohel mohammed from enh i secure in this presentation we are going to discuss about integration of oracle fusion application to sailpoint identity iq using web services connector so in this presentation we will be having a basic introduction of oracle fusion and we will be discussing about oracle fusion apis like get all workers api get all user accounts api create employee api role rework api rehire employee api and use cases like joiner lever and rehire scenarios involved in this integration oracle fusion cloud hcm is a complete cloud solution that connects every human resource process and every person across the enterprise Oracle HCM Cloud enables HR leaders by delivering an end-to-end -end solution to manage every stage of employee life cycle. Human capital management transforms the traditional administrative functions of human resource departments like recruiting, training, payroll, compensation, and performance management into opportunities to drive engagement, productivity, and business value. It also offers data efficiency by preserving history of changes made to the attributes of some objects. As a professional user, you can retrieve and edit past and future versions of an object. Many HCM objects, including person names, assignments, benefit plans, grades, jobs, locations, and payrolls, are date effective. Date effective objects include one or more physical records. Each record has effective start and end dates. One record is current and available to transactions. Others are past or take effect in future. Together, these records constitute the logical record or object instance. Here, Oracle Fusion application is integrated with SailPoint using a web services connector. Basically, connecting SailPoint to your web services allows you to configure any web services supported managed system which can read and write on the managed system using the respective managed system web services. Web services supports JSON and XML for read and write. The APIs used for integrating Oracle Fusion to SailPoint are Get all workers API, get all user accounts API, get all roles API, create employee API, update employee API, terminate worker API, role revoke API, and rehire employee API. APIs used to integrate Oracle Fusion with SailPoint are get all workers API. This fetches all the worker records as of the specific date. Worker types include employee, contingent worker, and pending worker. By default, the current date is retained. Get all user accounts API. This fetches all the user accounts. We may need to manage user accounts for the workers to assign or revoke fusion roles. Get all roles API. This is used to get the roles assigned to the user accounts. Create Employee API. This is used to create an employee record in Oracle Fusion application. Update Employee API. This is used to update an employee record in Oracle Fusion application. Terminate Worker API. This is used to disable a worker record in Oracle Fusion. Role Revoke API. This is used to revoke an assigned role. Rehire Employee API. This is used to enable an employee record in Oracle Fusion. The workers resource provides all the worker records as of the specific date. Worker types include employee, contingent worker, and pending worker. The HTTP method used in this API is GET. Here in the context URL, you can see 
the expand query parameter is used to fetch the details of address, emails, and other attributes in the form of list instead of links. Other query parameters allowed for this API are effective date, queue, fields, finder, limit, offset, and many more. Here you can also see the example of response body of Qtol Workers API. Basically, the information is contained in a list called items. The information contained under items is person ID, person number, date of birth, and address information of the person will be contained in a list called addresses. Similarly, the email information of an employee will be contained in the list called emails. We may need to manage user accounts for the workers in the organization to assign or revoke a fusion role. Here, the HTTP method we will be using is get. Here, expand query parameter is used to fetch the details of user accounts in the form of list instead of links. Other query parameters allowed for this API are effective date, queue, fields, finder, limit, offset, etc. Here, you can see the example response body of get all user accounts API. Basically, this response consists of a list called items under which we will be having user accounts information such as user ID, username, suspended flag, person ID, person number, GUID, and user account roles information in the form of a list called user account roles. Get all roles API. The roles LOV resource includes the list of values for roles. Here the HTTP method used is get. Here you can see the example response body of get all roles API. Basically it contains roles information in the form of a list called items. The items list contains information such as role ID, role name, role code, description, and many more. And the next one is create employee API. Basically, the employees resource includes all employees as of the specific date. By default, the current date is retained. This create employee API is used to create an employee record. The HTTP method used for this API is post. Here you can also see the example response body contains the attributes such as legal entity ID, which specifies the unique identifier for the legal entity. Next one is first name. This specifies the first name of the employee. Last name. Last name specifies the last name of the employee. The next one is display name. This specifies the display name of the employee. Work email. This specifies work email address of the employee. Address line one. Specifies first line of primary email address. City. This specifies town or city in which the address is located. Country. This specifies the country in which the address is located. Date of birth. This specifies date of birth of the employee. Gender. This attribute specifies the gender of the employee. The next one is username. This specifies username of the employee work mobile phone number basically this attribute specifies the work mobile phone number of the employee person number this specifies 
number assigned to a person to identify the person uniquely assignment number this specifies unique identifier for the assignments or terms assignment name it specifies the name of a particular assignment business unit id it is a unique identifier for the business unit job id it specifies unique identifier for the job grade id this specifies unique identifier for the grade department id this department id attribute specifies unique identifier for the department action code it says action performed on a particular record such as hire and pending worker and many more assignment status basically this attribute says the hr status of the assignment such as active or inactive manager id this attribute specifies the unique ident identifier for a manager manager assignments id this attribute specifies identifier for the manager's assignment default expense account now this default expense account is represented as a concatenated value of company code cost center and location code the next one is update an employee api this api is used to update an employee record the http method used for this api is patch here for this api we need employee's unique id which is the hash key of the attributes which make up the composite key for the employee's resource and used to uniquely identify an instance of employees here you can also see the example request body in the request body we will be sending attributes such as first name last name display name work email username address line 1 work mobile phone number work phone number city and many more the next one is terminate a worker api this api is used to disable a worker record the http method used for this is post for terminate or disable operation the employees or workers unique id at period of service id are required here you can also see the example of request body which includes action code and termination date and the next one is rehire an employee api this api is used to enable an employee record the http method used for this api is patch here for rehire api we need employees or workers unique id here you can also see the example of request body which includes action code assignment number assignment name legal entity id business unit id job id grade id department id default expense account manager id manager assignment id manager type next one is role deprovisioning api while managing user accounts for the workers in our organization we also need to manage the roles assigned to the user accounts based on the level of access required for the workers this api is used to revoke roles of a user account the http method used for this api is patch for role deprovisioning operation we need user accounts guid and role id the use cases involved in our integration are create operation update operation terminate or disable operation rehire or enable operation and 
roll deprovisioning operation. Joiner process. Joiner process starts with the creation of account in TruthSource application. Then that account will be brought to sale point through a scheduled aggregation task. Then through a scheduled refresh identity cube task and using a configured business rule and assignment rule, two conditions are checked. One is identity or account in truth source should be active and the second one is business unit is not equals to so and so. If the above condition are satisfied then the account creation process for Oracle Fusion application gets starts. As, of the, as part of the joiner or account creation process basic access will be provisioned to the newly created account from the Fusion end automatically. Lever process. Lever process starts with the last working day attribute of the account is populated in TruthSource application. Then that last working day for that account will be updated in sale point through a scheduled aggregation task. Then through a scheduled refresh identity cube task, it is checked that if that last working day is equal to today's date. In other words, it is checked that if the last working day has reached. If the last working day has reached, then the account disable process for Oracle Fusion application gets triggered. As part of the termination process, all the roles which that account has will be deprovisioned. Rehire process. Rehire process starts by enabling the account in TruthSource application. Then that is updated in sale point through a scheduled aggregation task. Then through a scheduled refresh identity cube task, the account enable process for Oracle Fusion application gets triggered. As part of the rehire or enable account process, another new assignment is created for that account with assignment name and assignment number appended with R. And basic access will be assigned to that enabled account as we saw in the create account use case. Let us have a quick overview of basic configuration parameters of sale point identity IQ of services connector. Base URL. The base URL is used to connect to the web service managed system. Authentication method. Authentication methods that are supported are OAuth2, API token, basic authentication, no or custom authentication. Schema attribute for account enable status. Basically this specifies attribute name and value required to be provided to check the enable status. For example, status equals to active. Username. This specifies the username of the resource owner. Password. This specified password of the resource owner. Grant type. Here we can select the grant the type of grant from the option, one of the options which includes refresh token, JWT, client credentials, password, SAML bearer assertion. Client ID. This attribute specifies client ID for OAuth authentication. Actually, this is attribute is optional for JWT and SAML bearer assertion. Client secret. This is optional for JWT and SAML assertion. This specifies client secret for OAuth to authentication. Token URL. This specifies URL for generating access token. Here we will be using authentication method as basic authentication to integrate Oracle Fusion with sale point. Here you can see the account aggregation operation 
configured for Oracle Fusion. Basically, in this operation, we will be using Get All Workers API. You can see the context URL and HTTP method and the response mapping of account aggregation operation. As we discussed in the Get All Workers API, the HTTP method we will be using is get. As part of the response mapping, we will be capturing attributes such as period of service ID, workers unique ID, action code, start date, legal employer, grade code, job code, legal entity ID, assignment ID, assignment number, display name, grade ID, business unit ID, and many more. And next operation is group aggregation. Basically, this operation lists all the roles from Oracle Fusion to sale point. In this operation, we will be using API called get all user account roles. As we discussed, the HTTP method we will be using in this API is get. As part of the response mapping, we will be capturing attributes such as role name, description, active flag, role code, role ID. The next operation is create account operation. Here, this operation is used to create an account in Oracle Fusion. The API we will be using in this operation is create an employee API. The HTTP method we will be using here is post. As part of the request body, we will be sending attributes such as legal entity ID, first name, last name, work email, address line 1, city, country, gender, work mobile phone number, username, person number, assignment number, assignment name, worker category, business unit ID, grade ID, department ID, job ID, action code, assignment status, manager ID, manager assignment ID, and manager type. Here, the next operation is update account operation. This operation is used to update an account in Oracle Fusion. Here, as part of the context URL, we will be passing workers unique ID which will be same as employee's unique ID of the employee to be updated. The HTTP method we will be using is patch. As part of the request body, we will be sending attributes to be updated such as first name, last name, display name, work email, username, address line 1, work mobile phone number, work phone number, city, manager ID, and manager assignment ID. And the next operation is disable operation. This operation is used to disable an account in Oracle Fusion. As part of the context URL, we will be passing Workers Unique ID and Period of Service ID. Where Workers Unique ID is a Workers Unique identifier of the account to be disabled. And Period of Service ID is a Period of Service identifier of the account to be disabled. The HTTP method we will be using is POST. As part of the request body, we will be passing attributes such as action code and termination date. And the next operation is enable operation. This operation is used to enable an account in Oracle Fusion. As part of the context URL, we will be passing Workers Unique ID of the account to be enabled. The STP method we will be using is patch. As part of the request body, we will be passing attributes such as action code, assignment number, assignment name, legal entity ID, business unit ID, job ID, 
grade id department id default expense account manager id manager assignment id and manager type the next operation here is role deprovisioning operation this operation is used to revoke a role from an account in oracle fusion here as part of the context url we will be passing two attributes which are accounts guid and role ids where guid specifies guid of the user account for which the role is to be revoked and the role id is the identifier of the role to be revoked we have developed some of the rules as part of the integration process correlation rule a correlation rule is used to select the existing identity to which the aggregated account information should be connected the correlation rule runs for every link created in the aggregation the accounts from oracle fusion are correlated with identities based on email address and person number attributes this is accomplished using a correlation rule assignment rule this rule is used in a business role which is used to create oracle fusion account it checks two conditions the first condition is employee status should be active and the second condition is the company or business unit id is not equals to so and so before provisioning rule we have used this rule to add few attribute requests to the provisioning plan before provisioning requests like create modify enable disable etc starts please subscribe to enh for any technical updates